so we were discussing numerical techniques for 2d steady state conduction problems and if you remember we discussed those few figures where we discretized a two dimensional surface you know that and i told you there is something known as finite difference equation where you approximated the gradients by taylor series and you know that i i have gone through this formulation and finally i come up with the energy balance method and if you remember i stopped at this point okay so let me just complete this formulation and then i would move on to a sample problem kind of thing not a sample problem i would just say uh, it's it's a case study kind of thing so let's let let me write down the equation for a specific case i have derived all the things i hope you have simplified it yourself so what i would do is i would just to make the things very simple i assume beta equals 1 okay what do you mean by beta equals 1 i would say this is delta x equals delta y you understand that so let me put it this way this is beta equals 1 so i can write it like t i j plus 1 minus t i j and then i have 1 over beta is again 1 so plus ti minus 1j minus tij then we have tij minus i think there is a negative sign yes minus tij plus T i plus one j, and finally the last term is about minus T i j plus T i j plus one equals zero. And I think I think j minus one. Yes, j minus one. so this is like j minus 1 okay now see i told you that to find out the value of tij just just look at that there are four tijs <coughs> right so i can just say that ti j plus 1 plus ti minus 1j plus ti plus 1j plus ti j minus 1 that is equal to 4 ti j so that's what you got understood right so it is quite simple now this is what we need to find out ti j okay and there are four other points four surrounding points neighboring points which are required to find out that value now for example just just remember that case this one just just assume this one let's say this is tij so you need to have this value this value this value and this value now all those required values are again unknown right all those required values are unknown so it means that you don't have any idea about those points as well so what you would do is you would write down the same energy balance equation for all those points okay and then you would solve them simultaneously you understand that now i would solve just one point now the i i think at the end of this class i i might have told you that if if this is the case where you have to simultaneously solve all the systems of equation to find out all the unknowns in one step 
you simultaneously solve them right and generally you simultaneously if you simultaneously solve the equation you solve it in terms of ax equals b you remember that you construct a matrix a and then you construct a matrix of unknowns and then the right hand side is known to you ax equals b in your linear algebra course you might have done that so there are certain characteristics associated with all those uh, matrices you can say right so if you construct a matrix there are different numerical schemes related to finite element finite volume let's say finite difference where those matrices have you can say very special characteristics and this is kind of a topic in numerical analysis or linear algebra i am not going into that detail if you happen to learn anything about cfd or numerical analysis in detail you would study this thing but i would stop at this point as far as the formulation is concerned okay now this thing where to find out this unknown you have to write the equation of all these unknowns as well and solve the equation simultaneously those kind of numerical schemes are known as implicit schemes <coughs> right those kind of numerical schemes are known as implicit schemes and in case of uh i think unsteady heat transfer i would solve few cases where you would see that at all the time steps you would find out the value of temperature at all the unknown points at the same step you don't need to have the information about the other points you don't need to simultaneously solve the equations those kind of schemes are known as explicit schemes right and explicit schemes do put some kind of restriction on the size of delta x delta y and delta t as well implicit schemes you don't have to put any kind of restriction over there it is just the accuracy which is disturbed it is not the stability of the problem now i hope you understand what is stability now stability means for example if you start from let's say this is temperature at some point ij and this is what t is let's say if you start from the initial condition and with the passage of the time it goes to infinity it means the system is unstable <coughs> right it means the system is unstable if if the amplitude grows and it goes to infinity okay you might have seen uh, that famous example that if you uh, because it was just a technical term so i would like to describe it there is a ball over a hump if you disturb it slightly it would not come back to its original position right it means the system is unstable why because it has not any capability to come back to its original position where it was disturbed but for example if you take this kind of bowl and you disturb it over there it would come back to its original position so that is kind of stability right so this is a stable system and then there is a neutral equilibrium as well where you disturb it or not it would stay as such okay so these are different forms of stability and whenever you learn about stability these things are associated with each other okay but my my point is just to get you uh, guys familiar with some technical terms right and what is their physical meaning i am not going into the stability analysis but at least you should know that okay so you know how to construct the equation for an from an energy balance method now let's solve a very simple problem i would solve one example case you can say uh let's solve at least uh that question where we can have like 4 by 4 grid size 4 by 4 uh, sorry 2 by 2 so that we can only solve four equations i just want to solve the whole problem so that you can understand okay and i just say this is a plate right whenever you start treating any problem mathematically you should give and you are talking about those kind of systems where geometries are involved or dynamics is involved just give reference axes all the time okay so let's say these are the four cells 
these are the four cells and you have those centers where you want to find out temperature okay this is how we start start with an energy balance method and because two dimensional steady state problem steady state heat transfer problem without any heat generation what's the equation partial square t by partial x square partial square t by now if you solve this pde you need to have how many boundary conditions four now still if you want to solve it numerically you need to have four boundary condition okay now those four boundary condition i say that let's say this boundary is like 20 degree centigrade or okay i i would not use any value i would just say this is t1 just to make it a generalized thing i would not use any value okay this is t1 here you have t2 uh, sorry this is t3 and on this side you have t4 okay now see obviously the surrounding point for this one on the left hand side this would be the center of the next cell had there been any cell this could have been the center not this could by the way it should be here but we know the value at this point at least right somewhere in the middle of those two intersecting nodes similarly i have value at this point now all the circles all the circles these are the known values why because those circles are the points at the boundaries which you which you should know okay now what would be the index of this point let's say it is 1 1 i would start from this one although that 1 comma 1 should start from this point or that point but just for the sake of simplicity i would start from this point okay why because i, I have already uh, given the temperatures over there what would be this index come on this should be 2 comma 1 why because i would be increased i is something which is increasing in x j is something which is increasing in y so this should be what 1 comma 2 good and this is 2 comma 2 okay now let's say let's write down the equation for uh this 1 comma 1 node 1 comma 1 write down the equation for node 1 comma 1 okay we assume i would i would suggest that you should not assume that the energy in is going to uh, is basically equal to energy out and some arrows are basically coming in and some arrows are going out to make it simple you assume that all the arrows are coming in physically it is not possible but mathematically mathematically you can handle it just like you assume the uh, direction of forces in case of statics or dynamics you remember that three boy diagram you just assume it and finally you come up with a negative sign if if you have uh, taken the reverse direction okay so you can assume in this case you can assume that all the energies are coming in okay so sorry energy if energy is coming in it either it has to be stored or it has to go out are we talking about any kind of unsteady system so let's say i am just talking about this 1 comma 1 this is the cell where the center is lying and i have this point this point sorry th this should be a circle because it is known and then this point clear now see all the energies i assume that all the energies are coming in okay now see all the energy rates we we talk in terms of energy rate that is coming in so let's say this is q1 this is q2 this is q3 and this is q4 sorry no no this is just a mathematical process if you want to say that okay fine you want to have it physically correct as well okay fine just change the river direction of of this one q let's say three energies are coming in they should be added together and on one side it is going out right 
but to as you, you don't know at this point you don't know where the energy is coming in where the energy is going out what is the high temperature what is the lower temperature you don't know at all right so what you can see is you can just assume it mathematically you can assume it but physically you know that that it is it is going to create a problem physical problem is there mathematically you can treat this problem it it would give you correct results okay this is the same analogous to the case where you assume the forces just just remember that okay so you say that all the forces are in the negative x direction and let's say at the end of uh, your solution you would find out one force in the y direction why because to balance all the forces you have to uh, have some opposite force as well okay so this is this is just assumption you can say that mathematically it is correct but if you want to uh, have that physical uh, sense as well so you can change the direction no problem at all just just put a negative sign with one q or two q's right so <coughs> just for the sake of this thing i would write it down what could be q1 you remember the formulation in the last class what what could be q1 for one case i would write down this q1 this should be minus k a this should be partial t by what partial y isn't it because there is a gap in the y direction now then it should be what minus k and area is what yes area is delta x into 1 because it is basically intersecting this surface right so this delta x into 1 and this should be t 1 comma 2 minus i'm sorry i i should have written it over there t 1 comma 2 minus t 1 comma 1 over what delta y okay so i would write it down over there this should be minus k delta x over delta y t 1 comma 2 minus t 1 comma 1 this is q1 dot okay then just look at that q2 dot what should be that q2 dot minus k and obviously this this area is delta y into 1 and then delta x would be divided by this difference right i would write it down straight away and this could have been t 2 comma 1 minus t 1 comma 1 understood at the center at the center now this point i already know that why because i can't i can't go beyond this point there is nothing physical over there this is the plate boundary sorry So this is one one. I I I just give this node as the number one comma one. I did not start from this point or this point. I started from this point. Although you should have started from this point. I understand that. Okay. So it is your choice. You can start from this point. No problem at all. But because the values are known, I don't. I am not going to solve it. Right. So you can start from this point. Okay. Any question? what would be the temperature at this okay just to answer your question i am not going to deal with those kind of questions in this course just to answer your question if you are treating some problem using finite difference methods let's say finite difference methods and you are going to solve it use you are going to use this value by the way this value would not be used in any case this value would not be used to find out any temperature at any unknown node but anyways just to answer your question you can take the average it is the user's choice that at the corner whether you apply this boundary condition or that boundary condition or you just take the average it is your choice okay generally people take the average generally but this is this is kind of a good thing about this uh, centered scheme self centered scheme that you are not going to have any kind of value at the node so you don't need to worry about this problem okay let's come back to this q3 now this q3 is quite interesting you see this q3 is there and in case of this q3 again it is going in so this is negative sign you would have minus k and this is the delta y into 1 this is the area which is basically being crossed by heat waves and then it should be what 
T1. Why? Because at this node, temperature is T1 minus T1 comma 1, and it should be divided by what? Come on, this is the gap between them. Delta x by 2. Now the gap has been reduced. You are not taking the difference between two centers of the cells. Right? Why? Because this boundary node, this boundary node, it is basically, it, had it been there, then it would be delta x. But it is somewhere in the middle. Right? So this is basically what? Delta x by 2. So I would say this is delta x by 2. So you can multiply it with 2 over there. <coughs> you understand that? So just look at this. This is basically you can say a physical approach. <coughs> physical approach. Now let's let's write down the last one. Uh, what's the last part? This is Q4. So this Q4, this is going to be delta x into 1. And then you have T4 minus T1 comma 1 and then it should be divided by what? Delta y by 2. So it should be multiplied by 2 over there. Okay. So now can you simplify this equation? Now just simplify this equation, it means just keep all the terms with T1 comma 1 on the left side and all the terms with let's say uh, T1 comma 2, 2 comma 1 on the other side. Okay. So let's say I just, now and it should be equal to 0, it should be equal to 0. So you can take K as a common of all those terms, right. So let me write down and I again I assume that delta x equals delta y just for the sake of simplicity otherwise if, if that is different you understand that you need to find out the value of that beta term. So for, for the sake of simplicity or just to quickly solve the problem I, I just take delta x equals delta y. So this becomes t1 comma 2 minus t1 comma 1. Then we have minus t2 comma 1 <coughs> minus t1 comma 1 minus 2t1 minus 2t1 comma 1 minus 2t4 minus 2t 1 comma 1 equals 0. Okay. It means let's simplify this equation. This minus this 2, then we have 4, and then we have 6. So this is minus 6t 1 comma 1 equals what? Let's make it positive. So all that terms would be. So this is t 1 comma 2 plus t 2 comma 1 plus t1 comma 1 uh, I'm sorry this is this t1 comma 2 this is t2 comma 1 and then you have minus 2 t1 so this should be 2 t1 sorry Sorry? This one? All, okay, you are talking about this thing? This should be plus. And then this should be plus as well. This is what you are talking about. Okay, fine. So, this is uh, 61 comma 1 and then you have t1 comma 2 plus t2 comma 1 and then you have plus 2 t1 plus 2 t4 right and t1 comma 1 
would be equal to 1 by 6 t1 comma 2 plus t2 comma 1 plus 2 t1 plus 2 t4 just remember this equation 1 just remember this one okay now let's talk about node 2 comma 1 Can you write down the equation for node 2, 1? Just write it down, come on. Just write it down and tell me what would be the final equation. Just give me the final equation in this term. Just, just solve it, please solve it very quickly. I am talking about this node, 2, 1. You should have assumed all the energy force, uh, sorry, energy terms going in, let's say all the energy transfer rates are going in okay and then if they are going in just write down e dot n equals zero write down all the four terms apply Fourier law and just give me the final equation and I again I am talking about this equation only sorry this node Come on, give me the equation. Okay, so you have got the equation. What's the final equation? Uh, we are just talking about t2, comma 1. It should be on the left hand side and what, what is on the right hand side? 1 by 6 again. Okay, t1, comma 1. Okay. Okay. So that's what you got done all agreed okay fine so let's talk about this node 1 comma 2 so by the way this is our equation number 2 I am numbering those equations so that, so that we can use this one so this is node 1 comma 2 now okay find out the equation please and you would have the same structure these are this this simple geometry would not create any kind of problem okay there are other other problems which i would discuss at the later stage of this class you would see there are uh, some problems and you can't continue with the same structure of the equation but anyways just just okay give me give me the equation for this node this one comma two okay this is what t one comma two on the le left hand side and it should be 1 by 6 okay 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 right so this is equation number 3 and similarly you can construct the equation for node 2 comma 2 I can write it down straight away from by looking at this and you can verify it yourself this is t 2 comma 2 and this would be 1 by 6 what t 1 comma 2 on the left then on the lower side you have t 2 comma 1 then 2 t comma 2 t 2 plus 2 t 3 that's what you got over there you understand that now see in each of the equation in each of the equation now this is very important to understand because at till this point I have been talking about formulation of equation now I am going to talk about solution of the equation okay so if you look at all these equations all these four equations if you add more number of nodes you can do that while discretization you can say that okay I am going to divide it in nine cells let's say hundred cells thousand cells no problem at all right but the only thing you, you need to do is write down the equation for all those cells. For the sake of simplicity, we have taken four cells. At the centers, we have write down, written down the, their equations. And now in each of the equation, just look at this equation. How many unknowns are there in this equation? This, one, 
two three one two three similarly one two three right you understand that and few of the terms are known to you would remain the same it hardly matters whether you take this thing as q1 dot or this thing as q2 dot no problem at all it hardly matters now do you see any kind of construction over there if you look at this term is there any q1 q2 q3 not not at all after simplification you would get the same equation okay so <clears throat> you have seen that each equation contains three unknowns so you have four unknowns and you have four equations can you solve them yes you can solve them okay what you can do is you can construct a matrix <clears throat> in the form of ax equals b like for example i would say this would be the matrix part first unknown is t1 comma 1 then i have t2 comma 1 then i have t1 comma 2 and finally i have t2 comma 2 okay now just look at this t1 comma 1 what is the unknown term 2t1 plus 2t4 it would remain on the right hand side and what is going to be multiplied with t1 comma 1 oh i am sorry yes it could be 1 by 3 if you multiply it with that one thank you okay so this is 1 by 3 t1 plus 1 by 3 t4 so what was what is the coefficient of t1 comma 1 1 what is the coefficient of t1 comma 2 over there this is minus 1 by 6 t1 comma 2 yes this is For t two comma one, it is one by six again. So this is minus one by six. You have minus one by six. There is no involvement of t two comma two, so it is zero. Right. So you can write down the coefficients of those matrices. Sorry, terms in those matrices, elements of those matrices, just like this. This is two t one. So two by six equals one by three. so this is 1 by 3 t1 and then this is 1 by 3 t4 <coughs> right just take all the unknown terms on the left hand side and keep all the known terms on the right hand side okay then construct this equation so you can see that all of the equations can be written like this now this is how you can solve ax equals b now you remember there is a method of gauss elimination and something like that in your linear algebra course right so for example if you have if you have a 4 by 4 grid let's say there are four unknowns there are four nodes which you want to find out so your matrix size is 4 by 4 now it is very difficult to solve it by hand isn't it 4 by 4 matrix generally we we tend to solve 3 by 3 matrices by hand okay so 4 by 4 you see if you want to increase the accuracy there can be 10 by 10 let's say 100 by 100 and if you look at a real fluid mechanics problem or a structural problem or a vibrational problem which you are going to solve it through finite difference or finite element or finite volume so there are like million by million of uh, grid size okay and if you start solving it by hand where would you go right so this is where computer comes in you construct those equations you give the input to the uh, computer and it does the computation for you okay but because you are learning this system so you have to solve at least let's say 4 by 4 3 by 3 not the 3 by 3 would not be there at least 4 by 4 would be there okay 2 by 2 but there is another way to solve it excuse me solving this 
system of equation by ax equals b or just like using this method you can solve it like x equals a inverse b isn't it you can take the inverse and this is by the way this is known as direct method of solving this equation these are the direct methods and they are computationally very expensive computationally they are very expensive what does that mean it would take more time they have to perform more number of steps to give you the answer right so there are other methods which generally are used to solve these kind of systems there are other methods those techniques are known as iterative techniques also they are known as indirect methods okay now just see that you have four equations and you are going to solve them using iterative methods in this course i would talk about two methods one jacobi method this is jacobi method and then i would talk about gauss seidel method okay now you already know what is a direct method that i am not going to discuss you already know that from your linear algebra course i am only going to discuss this indirect method that is the iterative method okay first i would talk about this jacobi method i would solve the same equation through jacobi method and then i would solve the same equation through gauss seidel method okay now as far as jacobi method is concerned in case of iterative techniques be very attentive in case of iterative techniques step 1 is assume the values of unknown nodes let's say assume the unknown values of the at the nodes let's say assume the values of unknown uh temperature at the nodes okay fine let's put it this way now what does that mean this is a very tricky step by the way it can reduce the number of computations or it can increase the number of computation so you have to be very sensible okay just look at that for example what does that mean first step in case of iterative technique what you do is you assume that this temperature t11 t2,1 t1,2 and t2,2 you, you just assume the any value let's say you say that that i assume that those nodes those unknown nodes they are at a temperature of 20 degree centigrade let's say you just assume it okay now for example if i say that the temperature on this side and on this side is 20 degree centigrade and the temperature on this side and on this side is let's say 20, 30 degree centigrade obviously all of those nodes would be somewhere between 20 to 30 you understand that now if you this is kind of an intelligent guess okay that i assume okay fine all the unknown values are 25 degree centigrade but if you assume okay all the values are 100 degree centigrade mathematically you can take that but this is not a sensible guess now why it is not a sensible guess and how would it increase the number of steps for you guys how it would increase the computational cost that i would show you okay so let's say i assume that i know the value and for example i say that all the unknown values are let's say uh i just assume this is uh, t dash or t not t not okay so step 1 is assume the values at all the unknown nodes and i assume it is t not now see what was the first equation the first equation was t1 comma 1 equals 1 by 6 t what what was on the left hand side this was right hand side this was 2t comma 1 plus t1 comma 
प्लस टू टी वट वॉज दैट टी वन प्लस टू टी फोर ओके फाइन नाउ आई से दैट बिकॉज दिस इज आइट्रेटिव टेक्निक दिस इज आइट्रेटिव टेक्निक आइट्रेटिव टेक्निक मीन्स दैट फॉर एग्जाम्पल so let's say i am just going to talk about this iterative technique iterative technique means we are going to perform few iterations iteration means let's say at first iteration i say that that the temperatures are t not at all of these nodes right at iteration 1 i say that all the temperatures are t not unknown temperatures let's say this is iteration 1 i assume that t1 comma 1 equals t uh 1 comma 2 equals t 2 comma 1 equals t 2 comma 2 equals t not right and just to describe this iteration 1 i say that this is level k equals 1 so this k is showing the number of iteration this is the first step of jacobi method okay so just to describe the value of some temperature at some number of iteration i add an other index over there at the top of t1 sorry t and i say that this is k right this this these are indices these are not pars the superscript and subscripts these are indices this is not t raised to power k right just to indicate it or you can put it over there as a third index at the but generally this is the convention what we follow so t1 comma 1 k this is not raised to power k i repeat this is just k it means this this thing at kth iteration level right now jacobi method says jacobi method says that this t1 comma 1 at k plus 1th level is equal to 1 by 6 t 2 comma 1 at the previous iteration level i repeat it i repeat it right just just note it down this value is at k plus 1th iteration level and these all values are at kth level now it means what does that mean let's say i i want to perform iteration 2 I want to perform iteration two. Although this is not iteration one, this is just the step one. But just for the sake of clarity, I I I say that this is iteration two. So what does that mean? K is equal to two. Now it means t one comma one at the second iteration level would be equal to one by six. This is t two comma one at first iteration level. And what is the value of the first iteration value level? similarly plus t1 comma 2 at first iteration level plus 2t1 obviously 2t1 is remains the same so i don't need to put this boundary conditions remains the same okay and then plus 2t4 right now see sorry no obviously that for uh, for any iteration level i mean that would not change boundary condition remains fixed right boundary conditions remain fixed because there is no time as well so boundary conditions are this fixed values exactly now iteration level is basically this is k just just note down this thing left side is what you want to find out all the other nodes now this is the equation which i wrote down for t1 comma 1 isn't it all the terms on the right hand side they are at the previous iteration level except the boundary values why because those are fixed values okay so all of those values are what at the previous site now do you know this value at the previous iteration level this this was t not isn't it that was what you assumed isn't it now similarly can you do the same thing for t1 comma 2 at the second iteration level let's say for 1 comma 2 it was t1 comma 1 plus what 2 t2 comma 2 plus 2 t4 plus 2 t 
थ्री एंड ऑब्वियसली इट शुड बी एट फर्स्ट लेवल एज वेल सो फॉर आइट्रेशन लेवल टू आई कैन सॉल्व ऑल द फोर इक्वेजन्स डू यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट ओके आइट्रेशन मीन्स आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू सॉल्व इट डायरेक्टली I just assume first thing, and by a hit and trial method, I just keep swinging on, right? I would be roaming, roaming around the value, the actual value of t's at all the unknown points, right? And then I would basically defines the error term. Let's say I would I would do it that that step as well. Okay, let me let me describe it. For example, if I ask you. Uh, Okay, there is a problem. Why? Because you don't have taken any uh, course on numerical analysis. So let let me put it this way: If I ask you to find out, this is the very first topic in numerical analysis. So just for the sake of example, I I describe it. But please don't forget this thing. I would start from that point. So example is, I say that find out roots of an equation where you have two x four plus let's say. थ्री एक्स क्यूब प्लस एक्स स्क्वेयर प्लस एक्स इक्वल जीरो आई आस्क यू टू फाइंड आउट द रूट आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज वॉट डू यू मीन बाई रूट ओके नाउ देर इज अ डायरेक्ट वे एज वेल देर आर इन डायरेक्ट वेज एज वेल ओके देर आर मैथड्स नोन एज न्यूटन रफ्सन एंड ऑल दैट वेर यू कैन फाइंड आउट दोज रूट्स Now, how can you find out those root? By just looking at this equation, you can't say that this is the root. You assume a value, right? By the way, there there can be how many roots? This is the fourth degree polynomial, so there can be four roots. But but I am just taken, <coughs> just for the sake of uh, explaining this thing, I am uh, doing doing this step. For example, I say that one root is root one is let's say two. There is a method known as Newton-Raphson. It would give you some relation where you have some value. This is value at iteration level one, k one. For finding out the value at k two, you have some relation for the methods like Newton-Raphson and all that. Uh, not the first root. I would find out the first root by going through various iteration levels. Now, just see. For example, this this is there is uh, there is another technique. For example, this is the value where you want to reach, but you start from this point. You don't know that the actual value lies here, right? Okay. Let. For example, this is the actual root. This is the actual root. For example, and this is your assumed value. This is iteration level one. In the iteration level two, you reach there. In the iteration level three, let's say you reach there. In the iteration level four, you reach there. Right? So you keep moving around that actual point. You still do not know that this is the actual one. You understand that? Now, how do you reach from one level to the other level? That is something which is coming from the method itself. Just like I described an equation that. Left on the left hand side you have k plus one and on the right hand side you have k. So all those iterative techniques they go, they provide you with the relations. Okay. So using those relations, you keep doing that iteration. Iteration is just like step one to reach the actual solution. Okay. So this is k four, and then this is k five, and where would you stop? There is a beauty associated with those iterative techniques. Where would you stop? right this is an important question otherwise you would you would have performed like million iterations but is there any use of those millions iteration no doubt not at all where would you stop there is a stopping criteria in technical terms you would say that there is a convergence criteria okay there is a convergence that convergence criteria is a technical term remember this thing in your numerical analysis course as well so there is a convergence criteria now what does that mean convergence criteria after performing each iteration after performing each iteration you would find out the difference between the present iteration and the previous iteration let's say you say that this is t3 
and this is T2. So at all the iteration level, you would take this difference. After performing each iteration, you would say, okay, take this difference from the previous value. If you go to the next level, okay, take the difference from its previous level. Then take the difference from its previous level. So after performing each iteration, you would take that difference. Let's say your convergence criteria is assumed to be 1 into 10 raised to power minus 4. You say that, okay, if the difference between two iterative values becomes lesser than this value, 1 into 10 raised to power 4, I have reached my solution. You understand that? So it is quite fascinating to see that those iterative techniques would get you reached there. Okay, they would take you to that point where you would say that, okay, this is the actual solution. Fine, I am done with it. You understand that? So this is what iterative technique means. Now you see that for iteration level 2, you again solve this thing. For t2, comma 1, t2, comma 2, you can write down those equations. Similarly, by having, now you have all the values for iteration 2. Can you solve for iteration 3? Come on, what were the boundary conditions? What were the assumed values? For iteration level 1, what, what did I do? <coughs> okay, so this is iteration level 3. Now to find out the values at iteration level 3, on the right hand side, all the unknown values would be coming from iteration level 2. Similarly, for iteration level 4, all the values would be coming from you understand that? So that's how you keep performing iteration till the time you meet your convergence criteria. <clears throat> right? So I would not describe the convergence criteria for these specific techniques. Please see it in your book. Okay. So that's, that's the point, that your convergence criteria for those schemes, basically whenever those schemes are derived, they are going to make sure you would reach the actual point. Those schemes would make sure, right? You don't have to like worry about those accuracy of those schemes. Those schemes would make sure that you would reach the actual point subjected to the condition you reach the convergence criteria. You can say that, but for example, do I really need to find out any convergence criteria equal to 1 into 10 is for minus 10? Not at all. Like that, that, that is something to do with the significant figures. You know that significant digit something. Like for example, for an engineer, if you have a value of like 0 0.0089 and some other one came up with like 0 0.009, so it's the same thing, right? So this is the convergence criteria. That, that is why it is a numerical technique. Why? Because you are approximating the things. You are not actually coming up with, with so many significant digits. You are just approximating the things. Okay. So this is convergence criterion. Please read it. What is the convergence criterion for these iterative techniques? Read it in your book. So this is kind of a reading assignment for you guys. I have already described what is a convergence criteria. So you would keep performing those iterations. You would keep performing those iterations till the time you reach the solution. And what is the stopping criteria? The convergence one. Okay. Please read that convergence criteria for these kind of techniques in your book. That is just a, a paragraph, I think. Now, for example, we were talking about Jacobi iteration. Now, this is very interesting. I am going to talk about the next, next technique. We were talking about Jacobi iteration. Let's say there is a point someone noted that at this level iteration 2 please be very careful this iteration level 2 just look at that one for iteration level 1 although this is not iteration level 1 but this is just a step 1 kind of thing I assume the unknown values at t naught fine 
for iteration level 2 i have found out this value t1 comma 1 and then i moved on to t1 comma 2 isn't it just look at that for this iteration level 2 t1 comma 2 value is to be found out on the right hand side this is t1 comma 1 i have found out this t1 comma 1 at this present iteration level in the previous step isn't it so sense says according to you can say the sensible decision more sensible decision what i can say is instead of using this value from the previous iteration level let's use this value from the same iteration level because i have already found it out i repeat this value t1 comma 1 i am taking this value for jacobi iterative method method i am taking this value from the previous iteration level t naught but haven't i found it found it out for iteration level 2 in the previous step isn't it this was step number 1 in iteration level 2 this is step number 2 in iteration level 2 this value has already been known to us at iteration level 2 in step 1 isn't it so shouldn't i use this updated value over there i should similarly yes if you write down the next equation you should have used the updated value so what jacobi iterative uh, gauss uh, cdl iterative method says that if at the same iteration level you have found out the value of an unknown node for the same iteration level in the previous step use the updated value in the next step at the same iteration level <coughs> sorry t11 comma 1 should be from 1 as far as jacobi method is concerned let me complete as far as jacobi method is concerned what is the gauss seidel method just just see gauss seidel method says that you have found out at iteration level 2 in step 1 now at iteration level 2 i say this is step 1 and this is step 2 right so for gauss seidel method you have found out the value of t1 comma 1 in step 1 for step 2 you already know this value so use the updated one so for gauss seidel instead of 2 it should become You understand that? So, for example, at any iteration level, if you have found out some value in the previous step at the same iteration level, I repeat at the same iteration level, use the updated value. Use the updated value. That is something which is Gauss Seidel method. Okay, fine. If if there is an unknown value, use it from the previous level, no problem at all. This 2, comma 2. But is, is, isn't has, hasn't been updated yet right so it should be used from the previous iteration level this value has been updated in the previous step so use the updated value you understand that right yes they, they remain the same i am just talking about the value updated value at the iteration level that surrounding node would have the same index you understand that that surrounding node like for example in the surrounding of this node you would have the same surround node 3 2 comma 1 1 comma 2 that surrounding node is not going to be changed okay so the only thing to be changed is you need to use the updated value in the next step at the same iteration level and that is something where gauss seidel method really improved the computational time and computational uh, required number of steps like for example it, it may happen that if for using jacobi method for any problem you are solving it let's say in thousand steps so that gauss seidel method may solve this problem in let's say 200 iterations why because you are using the updated values whatever is known just use it in the next step whatever is updated use that updated value in the next step okay so again the convergence criteria just remains the same 
कन्वर्जेंस क्राइटेरिया रिमेन्स द सेम राइट सो आई होप आई एक्सप्लेन दिस गॉसिडल मैथड एज वेल वॉट यू नीड टू डू इज यू नीड प्रैक्टिस right i i would uh, give you assignment number 2 as well and uh, you should solve some problems yourself okay now i am done with the solution parts i am done with the formulation of equation and solution part now there are few specific things which i want to talk about few specific things just remember how many types of boundary conditions are there in general in heat transfer you have two types of boundary conditions whether you specify flux or you specify temperature isn't it in general i am not talking about the boundary conditions where we what we see in fin case those were specific boundary conditions but again if you look at those boundary conditions those are of two types either you specify temperature or you specify flux okay now let's say just look at that problem very carefully we have already done with the isothermal boundary conditions isothermal means that all along the boundary you have the same t1 <coughs> right now just see i am just going to talk about a very interesting case where you should you should be able to handle the flux boundary condition i would take the same case now please be very careful now these circles are the known values let us say on this boundary i say that temperature is t1 on this boundary temperature is t2 on this boundary temperature is t3 and on this side i say that <coughs> partial t by partial x is 0 now it means i am describing nyman condition on one boundary okay instead of specifying the temperature on the boundary i say that partial t by partial x is equal to 0 if i want to describe flux on this boundary i would say partial t by partial y would be 0 why because this that flux should be perpendicular to this surface normal to this surface okay so anyways i say that partial t by partial x is equal to 0 now the point is how i would handle this condition you understand the problem right yes if if you have any problem any problem in understanding this condition just let me know okay i say that there are four sides of this plate one side is insulated one side is insulated all the other boundaries they have their own temperature t1 t2 t3 one side is is insulated now if that side is vertical flux would be perpendicular normal to that surface okay so that is why if this side is vertical flux would be like partial t by partial x mathematically i would say partial t by partial x is zero right so just look at my discussion on this case that the symmetry boundary condition i was talking about that symmetry boundary condition and the insulation case just i think the second or the third lecture just look at that very carefully now my point is i say this is insulated now my point is how would you handle this problem using numerical technique i would say this is 1 comma 1 this is 2 comma 1 this is let's say 3 comma 1 sorry 2 comma 2 and this is 1 comma 2 let's say i describe this node as t5 and this node as t6 just the unknown value i do not know the temperature value at those nodes i just know the flux remember that this is the problem if you can understand to find out this value i need to know the temperature at this node isn't it but do i know the temperature at this node not at all so this is not a known point to me this is basically a cross this is an unknown to me i know the flux i don't know the temperature so i need to know the temperature as well on these points so how many unknowns are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 so the unknowns has become 6 okay so now see 
how can i handle this thing so for partial t by partial x how can i describe this partial t by partial x through taylor series if you remember that i can say t2 comma 1 minus t6 divided by delta x by 2 equals 0 can i say that partial t by partial x i can describe it like this so similarly i can say okay t2 comma 1 would be equal to t6 i can assume that right and using the flux condition obviously it should be there using the flux condition it should be there similarly for this this t5 using the same approach this t5 can be put equal to t2 comma 2 you understand that now now do now you know that how to use the values at the boundaries if you have a flux condition that flux may be a constant value as well let's say you say that q dot is equal to 2 units that partial t by partial y is let's say something 2 3 4 5 whatever okay so this is how you handle it is that clear now there is another problem <coughs> let me uh, show you another slide yes this one very interesting just see that if you have this kind kind of boundary this kind of boundary just be very careful and you have no complete cell at the boundary on this boundary you say that there is convection going on on this side on these two sides you say that convection is going on what does that mean what does that mean it means on this side and on this side you have convective heat transfer you understand that now how do you describe this q dot convection sorry h a and because this convection is taking place from t infinity to this node let's say this node is i comma j so this would be t i comma j minus t infinity and what would be area in this case let me let me describe it over there h a this q convection this q convection h a t i comma j minus t infinity now the problem is what would be a in this case by the way there are two t convections remember that there are two t convections one for this and one for this okay i would use the same approach i am just solving few case studies this is what would be this area in this case come on for for this q convection what would be this area yes this should be delta y by 2 in this case it should be delta x by 2 you understand that right so i just want to describe this point that if you are having some node at the boundary just like this one and you have some cell where this node is being placed at the center of that cell how would you handle this q dot convection condition like for example you may have a plate just like this one and i say that okay fine there is t1 there is t2 here you have let's say t3 here you have t4 but on this side within that side you may have some fluid okay so this condition is basically for those uh, problems you just need to describe that there is q convection on this side and on this side so there can be a problem that how to handle how to write down the equation for this node which is coming at the corner okay just just look at this this area this is the cell this this area has some interaction with the fluid this area just look at that 
this area and this area have some interaction with the fluid now what is this area what is this length no no that protruded length that extruded length out of the plane would be assumed as one what is this length this length is what so what would be this length delta y by 2 delta y by 2 right similarly what would be this length this total length is delta x so what would be this length delta x by 2 you understand that right so that's how you can write down the equation for different kinds of cases i would give you that assignment where you may have a uh, few different types of problems you just need to formulate the equation now once you write down the equations for all the unknown nodes you can solve them by jacobi method or by gauss seidel method and what is the better one gauss, gauss seidel method why because in each step at the same iteration level in the next step you can use the updated values okay should i give be giving you like 3 uh, by 3 matrix for the exam uh, you have been solving it for linear algebra okay 4 by 4 i would not give you 4 by 4 okay because because in realistic engineering problems you would not have those very small sizes of the mesh okay those are millions by millions generally at least 1000 by 1000 are there okay so i think in 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 the next class i i should also or let's say i i would have uh, some practice session as well and I, i i may try to give you some idea about how to solve those finite difference equation or pdes in matlab right so we can have uh, that discussion and then i would also give you some matlab codes and you can just attempt it with few boundary conditions at your home and just see how the temperature contours are changing <coughs> okay and we would have some physical physically significant discussion on those topics as well we would have that inshallah okay let's uh, stop at this point we would start from this point onward in the next class